Hi, I'm Mike Graham with Chauvet Professional, and this is Lighting Insights. Today we're going to be talking about something that we all know a lot about but don't always practice properly. We're going to talk about how to check your lights back in after they've been out on a long tour. Sometimes we're always pressed for time, but still it's important to do this on occasion at the very least. So we have the Legend 330 SR spots here as an example. Uh, these are great examples of lights that you'd normally see. Uh, most moving heads have got similar components. So the practice is usually about the same for every fixture that you have. And we're gonna start out talking about just checking the internal components just for wear and tear. Uh, so for example, if we have our fixture here, it's opened up. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is firstly, check out your belts. Uh, make sure you don't see any fray marks along the outsides. Make sure that you don't see any wear marks on the outside of your encoder wheel. Um, any wear marks are a good, uh, it's a good indicator that you've got a bent yoke or bending someplace that's going to need a little bit further inspection. Moreover, you want to make sure that this wheel here, this tension wheel, is still well-rounded and it's not wobbling at all. You also want to make sure that these cables here that are going into the yoke are, um, they don't have any wear on the outside of them and that they're still fully insulated. If they're open at all and you can see bare wires, that's a good opportunity to get a shock and that's a bad situation to be in. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to look at is on the other side of the yoke. This is where a lot of your PC boards are located. Uh, what you wanna do is just make sure that all these connectors are pressed in nice and tight. Um, typically they stay in really well, but on occasion they can vibrate loose during transit. Um, also as the truss goes up and down, there's a lot of vibration. Um, they can come loose. It's a rare occasion, but still it's something worth checking out. Uh, you also want to check again for any kind of burn marks or score marks where the wires go into the yoke. Um, because again, this is a spot where they do get worn over time, and you do want to make sure that they're perfectly, uh, perfectly intact for your next production. The next thing that you want to check is your lensing system. You want to make sure that your focus and zoom are all moving properly and not bending at all. So what you want to do is just move them up and down by hand and just make sure that everything is moving nice and freely. As you can see with this fixture, it's moving nice, nice and smooth and it's not bending in any direction. Um, you'll notice it pretty quick if it is out of position at all because they're not going to move freely. By checking this stuff, you're going to make sure that your, that your lamp is going to give you the most possible output and that all your fixtures are going to look uniform on stage during your next show. Um, while you're in here, you can also move your, move your prisms, make sure that they all slide nice and easy, and move your frost in and out and make sure that also moves nice and freely. While you've got the base covers off, one of the things you are gonna wanna do is check on the inside and make sure all of your power supplies still look good. Uh, you can do that by checking out your capacitors, making sure that they're not puffy or they're puffed up at all, and that goes for all your capacitors. Make sure that your power links are all nice and tight and nothing's loosened up over time. Uh, make sure all of your components are totally tightened in there and nothing seems loose. Uh, make sure there's no extra screws in the base rattling around. Um, all of these things can cause shorts or cause problems in your fixtures. The next thing you want to look at is your gobo section and your color wheel. You want to make sure that they're, all free, that they're all moving freely and openly so that you don't have any problems. So basically just spin it around, make sure everything is moving nice and evenly and freely. Do the same thing with the color wheel. Uh, can move the iris open and closed. Make sure it's moving really smoothly and it's not creating a lot of noise. Um, typically, if there's noise, it means that one of the leaves is bent and it's going to be changed. Again, it's not a common occurrence, but it's still something worth inspecting. You can also make sure that your individual gobo wheels are rotating freely. You can do that by moving the belt or by moving the gobos individually themselves. All your gobos should move at the same, at the same rate at the same time. Check all of your springs to make sure that the springs are all seated and that your gobos are not wobbling. If your gobos wobble, they can be really difficult to focus and the focus will slide in and out because the gobos aren't, set, aren't seated evenly and it's really obvious in your production. So you, that's pretty important to check. Um, this particular fixture is, has a light pipe in it to, uh, to bring the, lamp, the light from the lamp into the fixture. You wanna make sure that this optic is super, super clean. We're gonna go over how to clean that in just a few seconds. Lastly, if you do have fans on any of your bulkheads, just move the fan with your finger and make sure it freely moves. Again, when you're, if you are using an air can with these, 
Never let your um, never let your fans free spin. If they do free spin, it, it could create an electrical current going back into your bulkhead and cause problems with your PCBs or motors. If you're in a really tight situation on, on a show site and your gobos are really dirty, I'm not a big fan of this, but canned air is a good solution for that situation, especially if you got a lot of gunk on your gobos and you don't have time to take your entire bulkhead out. So what you can do is just a little bit of canned air, making sure not to allow your, um, your fans to free spool. Just go ahead and give a little shot of compressed air onto your gobos. And that's gonna blow out any dust or most of the dust that was obstructing your gobos. Next up, we're gonna talk about your CMY bulkhead. This is your cyan, yellow, and magenta color flags. Some fixtures, they move up and down. Some fixtures, they move in and out. It all depends on the fixture build. Um, you wanna make sure that the colors do move evenly up and down and to make sure that your motors are um, not catching. Also, this uses magnetic sensors, which means that you have a magnet um, here, here, and here. And then you have sensors for those magnets on the outsides of the bulkheads. What you wanna make sure is that there's no metal filings um, that are attached to these uh, sensors. If there are metal filings, it can throw off the calibration of the fixture and your colors won't be right. The problem with that is, is that the fixture won't throw a fault because as far as it knows, it's seeing the sensor, but because those metal filings are causing a problem, it can follow up your color mixing and just blow your whole show out. While you got this guy out, you might as well go ahead, just take a look at the fan, make sure it does move freely. Again, safety point, do not blow compressed air into a fan and let it free spool because it can cause major problems with the rest of your fixtures if you do. If you are gonna take the time to go ahead and clean your optics, which is a really good idea because when they've been on tour, they've been exposed to dust and grime and fluids and pyrotechnics and all these different atmospheric elements can cause major problems with the inside of your fixture. They can also make it so that your light isn't as true as it could be. Uh, you lose a lot of output because there are particulates that, that actually gather up on your optical systems. Um, I don't know why, but, gla but glass acts like a magnet for grime and it's really important that you clean it up. You wanna avoid certain things, like just a generic paper towel or your T-shirt is not the best way to clean off your optics. What I recommend is going to the uh, drugstore and getting yourself some gauze pads. Uh, these are all sealed up in a little package. They're lint-free, they're dust-free, so you're not adding more stuff to your fixture as you're trying to clean it off. And this is super important if you wanna make sure to have a great performance the next time for your lights. So basically, you wanna open it up as you can see, it's all folded over. If you're thrift-minded, go ahead and cut it in half. Always pour the rubbing alcohol or lens cleaner fluid onto the pad. You never put fluid directly onto optics. Uh, this can create pitting and it can also create spots that you can't get off easily. It's gonna be a huge time saver as you're going. You don't need to oversaturate your, your uh, pads, just enough to kind of give it um, so it's fully loaded, but not too much that it's dripping out. And for example, with your CMY colors, you wanna make sure and also wipe in the same direction. That way you're not gonna cause any kind of flaws or circles. Um, one of the reasons we use alcohol is because it evaporates really easily. It doesn't leave any grime, but still you don't wanna make swirls, so you always go in one direction. And it goes like that. And as you can see, it's evaporating nice and easily and all your grime is coming off. It's all left on the pad. Um, basically what I try to do is I'll use one pad per section of a fixture. So for example, I might use, might use one pad for my CMY mechanism, another pad for my um, color wheel and my gobos, and then a couple pads possibly for my external optics like my front lens and my zoom and focus because they, they gather up the most dust and they get the nastiest. Uh, you wanna make sure that your pad is still relatively clean and again, you can use both sides of it. Again, it extends the life of your, fi of your fixtures quite a bit. So this is really important to make sure you do when you're cleaning. If you should happen to have residue buildup, what you can do is take a dry pad and just again, 
in the same direction, up and down, or left and right, never in circles, you can just rub off any excess or any extra gunk that got held up. Um, pyro dust is the nastiest by far. It can take a while to clean. Again, pyro dust also has particulate granulates in there that can cause scratches. So it's super, super important that you're very careful as you're cleaning um, pyrotechnics off. In cleaning your front lens, you wanna make sure and use a pad onto itself because again, the front lens is the grimiest and dirtiest. It's also one of the most critical lenses to keep clean. Uh, so again, douse your pad evenly. Not too much fluid, but make sure you throw your fluid on the pad, not directly onto the lens. And again, we're gonna go just straight motion, motions to make sure you do have no streaks. Until next time, I'm Michael Graham for Chauvet Professional, and this is Lighting Insights.